Well, these guys are going to be our friend today with the next part of learning how to reduce down alcohol in your alcoholing painting. We're going to play with brushes. I think it'll be a good one to try with because it's a dark color and you'll be able to see definitely where I have removed alcohol ink. Oh, howdy howdy, this is Claire Lawrence. I forgot, totally forgot that part. I need to do better. Anyway, so I like working with darker colors for example so that you can see how far you can pull the ink out with adding alcohol or even the technique of work with blending solution as well. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to add a nice little stripe of color and then we're going to play and manipulate with brushes. And I'm also going to have a little cup here with just a little bit of alcohol in it and we're going to dip the brushes in that. And you'll be surprised what we can do with that. So let's get started. All right, first things first. I'm gonna run a line of alcohol just to give the color something to move on. And all I'm gonna do is rock the color back and forth just to create a stripe. And these are uh, Copic alcohol inks, which are basically an alcohol ink marker refill. Uh, that you could just pour straight out of the refill bottle and it works really well. They have a huge range of colors and I primarily, and this is just me, I primarily stick with the nice bold colors but I find the ones that are very rich and that way I can manipulate it from the really rich color down to the very light color and then add different colors to it. All right, so I'm gonna dry this out and we're going to get started. Oops, sorry about that. Come on there. I'm not doing anything special. I'm just sitting there with the heat gun, moving it back and forth. So there's a bunch of things you can do with a paintbrush and alcohol. So first things first, I recommend at least having a little section of paper towel sandy. And I will tell you this much, if you get a lot of alcohol inks on your brush, not a problem. But what I would recommend that you do, and we'll just cover that real quick, is dip your brush into the alcohol quickly and then wipe it off right up let me just go ahead and get it over yeah let's see if i can pick up maybe some color i've got so much alcohol inks on these little holders here i could probably pick up some colors hey there you go that worked i just reactivated it all right so i've got some well, you can probably see it over the white. No, oh, maybe not. Okay. Well, I picked up some red that was on my little stands that the canvas is sitting on. Okay. And I want to get this off because I'm working with blue and I don't want it to interfere. So all I would do is just tap it into the alcohol quickly just to reactivate it and gently rub it on the paper towel. Then I would simply do it again until the red is gone. But don't go swishy, swishy, swishy because then your alcohol will turn red. But if it's inevitable because you're dealing with a lot of alcohol inks within your solution of alcohol, then what I do is it's not uncommon that I have a couple of cups handy. This one has a little bit of a blue tint to it. And I was just really heavy working with the blue earlier. And what I'll do is I'll use it for like the first round of cleaning off the brush. And then when it gets up to that kind of blue color, then I'll go and I'll go 
skip to the next cup. So that's my way of like stair-stepping the cleaning process to get my brush back down to where it's not going to be a problem. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to kind of kiss the sides with a brush. So I just tap it into there. I rub it on the side of the cup just, just a little bit to get rid of excess. And I'll brush up to the edge and sometimes pull some of the stuff down. Like so. Okay, let me zoom you in. Mm -hmm. That comes with sound effects. Very inexpensive budget here. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So I haven't picked up any more alcohol, but I bet I could reactivate it. So I grabbed a little bit more. Grabbed a little bit more. And you see how you can just barely touch the edge to get some alcohol to reactivate that color. It doesn't take a whole lot. Like so. Okay, you need to be back. Sorry, my son came in and he brought me a, a, a beverage. He was very sweet. Am I on camera? Yes. Just go in, skim, grab a little bit. And sometimes you don't even need to make a trail. You can just keep moving with it and soften the edge up on your own. Like, hmm. Alright, they're mega zoomed in. Let's see if um, the area I want to work on is in there. Almost. Okay, so you see how this area here is super, super light? And it's almost like a ribbony kind of thing? So I can go in, have just a little bit of alcohol, and I'm kind of brushing it off again on the ridge there to let go of some of the alcohol. And I'm just going to go in and just very gently go in and bring out the light areas even more if I wanted to. And then just start playing it little bit by little bit. And soften that up if I wanted to. All right, and what I could do, since I'm working with tiny, tiny areas, it's gonna dry like really fast. Let's see, am I on camera? Where am I? I'm way off camera, so it stops right there. Okay, great. <laughs> Let me back up a bit. Boink. Okay, I went to the point five. Let's try two. Ah, that worked. I'm just gonna play with all my buttons on my phone. There we go. Okay. So I can still come back in here, add more alcohol to this particular spot, reactivate it, and drag it out and get it even softer. If you get a big blob of alcohol on there, then let's see, we can make really make stuff happen. Almost has a jellyfish kind of look to it. I'll have to remember that. But even big blobs going again the second time, you can really make some progress on removing color too. And if you don't want it to keep on creeping up like that, hit it with a dryer real quick. Just to get that alcohol to evaporate. So that's one way to do this. Let's see. 
get you back down. I'm gonna flip this around. Now I showed in some other videos. All right, lay flat. Thank you. Where I took a brush and you can go through your paintings and kind of manipulate the colors. Now look, I haven't done anything more to my brush and I can continue to just paint over top. And you can see when it goes over the dark areas, there's still alcohol in that brush. But what I have done is on my brush here, I've got a little bit of blue here and I'll demonstrate by painting on the canvas, right? So keep that in mind for something else here. So I'm going to just go here and I'm going to rub this across. And we're going to have some effects just strictly by going back and forth. It almost gives you that cloth kind of a like a weave pattern. Of course, that depends on how even you are or it'll give you hair like look to it. If you let it dry on its own, let me show you this. Okay, so I picked up quite a bit of alcohol and it's gonna create an edge right here. And we're just gonna let that dry on its own. And it, sometimes it'll give a little beaded edge, sometimes it won't. Sometimes it'll just give a harsh line and it's not gonna do the beady edge. All right, let's try this again. I did over here earlier. Now, a lot of times when I'm doing this with a brush, I may not even pick up the dryer whatsoever. Zoom in. That was kind of fast. Sorry, guys. I should have warned you. But you can really start developing up texture, rhythm, movement, all kinds of stuff. And the more you go across it in both directions, you can pick up ink and redistribute the ink as well. Like if I wanted to draw some lines coming in, I still got a little bit of blue here. You see what I mean? Not that that looks really pretty or anything, because it doesn't. <laughs> But I can also, since I've got alcohol, I can make it lighter. It's like, eh, I don't like it that thick. Right, let's make it lighter. That was a really whiny voice. Sorry, guys. All right, let me hit this with Okay. So here's the other thing, and that is about stippling. And I think we're on a good spot right in here. I've got a really good amount of blue here and also gets light. Now what I recommend doing is dipping it in for sure, rubbing it off gently on the sides. And then you can do stippling where you're just barely touching the canvas, canvas and depositing little bits of alcohol. It's gonna reactivate the ink and it goes whoosh, to the edges of where the alcohol drop stops. So it naturally lightens it up. And I usually move the brush around so that way the first drips are always gonna be big. And you don't want it to go big, 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 small, medium, smaller, 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 like that. Sometimes it's good to bounce it around to give more of a random, and then go back when your drips are getting tinier. And so that way it's a little bit more interesting. Now, if you do want to play with the size and go bigger to smaller, kind of like they do with dot art, then go right ahead. All right. Let me also zoom in a little bit more here. Move you up. 
There we go. All right. So you see there, I've got some dots going on here. I'm picking up a little bit more alcohol and you can go back on top of these dots and do additional stippling as well. So you end up with very kind of like a medium brightness and then a little bit brighter inside. And even if you want that whole dot area to be brighter, you can add another drop of alcohol onto it and it'll lighten up that whole zone. Or you can just do like little bee dots that are with inside and inside and outside. So you start creating some depth that way or the illusion of depth by doing that. And even in these faded zones, watch, I'm gonna do a series of dots here. Am I on camera? Yes. And remember, we're probably gonna pick up a little bit of alcohol and it'll transfer. started a little bit further back so I picked up more out of the color you see that there so you can play with oh you can't see that right from there oh, great <laughs> Look. I'll do a pan afterwards I promise <laughs> so that's another way of messing with the alcohol and removal and adding texture and also bring in the color out a little bit as well. So that's another thing you can do. So it's a lot of fun, even just doing combinations. You can do it over top of each other. Swipe off your brush onto the paper towel and go back over it. Swipe a brush on the paper towel, remember, because it picks up some of that ink. And you can do play with removal. So some fun things to do. I'm gonna bring you in for a close-up here. All right, so here's the overall piece. Now remember, we're not trying to create a masterpiece. I'm just showing you some of the uh, effects you can do with the brush. And that's the edges that I was manipulating right there. And then lines going through it just by running the brush through it. And multiple times, even removal there. I was starting to work on removal in this zone. Actually, this zone looks like removal as well. And then, uh, of course, we got the dots going on there. And you can see, let's see if it's focused. Yep. Of course, I use the prettiest finger that I have that has no fingernail polish on there. So you can see how just by doing multiple dots on top of each other, you start getting some depth and different shading and stuff. And then this is going over the fade and it grabs a little bit of the ink and transfers it. So a lot of possibilities to use these techniques in any way you want. All right, so hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, but definitely hit the bell to get notified next time I put a video up. Later, y'all.